Hello and welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be milling some logs. The long story short is I recently bought some aluminum that I want to build some high bankers with. And uh, I'm trying to build a little bit of like a lean to storage thing just up against my fence to have a place to keep all this stuff before the next snowstorm comes in. Today, it's like almost 10 degrees Celsius out, a beautiful Chinook here at the end of November in Calgary. And uh, yeah, it just seemed like a good day to give this a try. We are using a Husqvarna 445. This is an older version of the saw, but if you go on the website today, this claims to be a 50cc saw. Not sure if that's considered powerful enough to do milling, but it's small logs and we're gonna figure that out today. Also, I've done a custom sharpening job to this chain to turn a regular uh, Oregon speed cut 95TXL072 into a ripping chain. Uh, I'll show you kind of what I did there and then we'll see if it actually helps. I'm gonna be able to go home with some actual lumber here today. It doesn't need to be perfect, just enough to build this shed I'm talking about. Put this into perspective, this is a 12 foot long two by six spruce sitting behind me. I just paid 18 Canadian dollars for that board. So it's not gonna take a lot to uh, get myself, you know, $100 worth of lumber to build with. And uh, yeah, the goal here today is make, make a interesting and informative video, learn a few things and maybe save a bit of money so that I can get that aluminum neatly stored before the next snowstorm. So let's bring you in close here and we'll have a quick look at this chain. So the chain on this saw is exactly this chain. The Oregon speed cut, uh, we'll just show you that right there. Now what's in this box is a brand new chain. Let's just bring that out here to have a look at. And if we put these side by side, fresh out of the box, never before used, you've got a tooth that cuts on the left and then a tooth that cuts on the right and then a tooth that cuts on the left and then a tooth that cuts on the right now if we go to the chain that's on here um, what you can see here is you've got a full tooth and then a full tooth but if i move down the chain you can see i've got a partial tooth and a partial tooth so these little teeth here rather than completely grinding them off of the chain I've left them to full height they just don't go across the top so they kind of score a little bit but they don't have to do the work of a full tooth and then because it's a full tooth back here it doesn't have to do the work of a full tooth because this one has already scored a little piece out of it so it's just chipping out the middle now I believe the idea here is that when you have a underpowered chainsaw, so I've only got 50 cc's, and you're putting all of your teeth into the wood at the same time, you need a certain amount of pressure behind that tooth to, to dig the tooth into the wood for it to actually start, you know, shaving a piece of wood up and cutting it. And when you distribute the pressure over all of the teeth at once in a big, long rip cut where your whole bar is buried into that piece of wood, you, they don't have enough pressure and they just sort of slide along the surface instead of cutting in. So if you push hard enough to give them enough pressure, well, guess what? You've got all of these teeth cutting nicely. Your chainsaw stalls out. It doesn't have the power to deal with it. So by eliminating every second tooth, so to speak, now you can put the appropriate amount of pressure on the cutting teeth that they need to function efficiently, but you're only pulling half as many teeth at any given time. And so you're underpowered chainsaw is now powerful enough to actually keep up. So that's kind of what I've done here is basically every second tooth just comes up and the top part has been shaved off. Should be a good comparison if I actually at the end of the day switch back to this chain I can sort of see how much slower it really is. But in the meantime I'm going to set this guy up on the timber tough here. You can sort of see in the picture how it's supposed to work and we'll see if using this uh, 2x6 I'm able to get a nice good cut and just sort of see how this saw runs with this chain. So you kind of got to go around and just like the lug nut on a, a tire, you got to tighten one and then once it's nice and tight you go do the next one and it's nice and loose again and you tighten it, go to the next one. I've screwed the 2x6 down uh, so it's not going anywhere and this basically just pivots and you can see there's a little bit of movement just where it's not totally 
tight. So I'm going to kind of just hold this um, off to one side as I cut and we'll see how good of a cut this actually can get us with this saw. This thing cuts through this log like butter in comparison to the old chain. That makes a huge difference. Now, I know I'm not, I'm not ripping through giant lumber like this is not a milling chainsaw. This thing is, it's like 10 pounds. It's just a, just a toy in comparison. But the, the saw, it's not bogging down. I'm, Oh, I don't have to push really hard on it to get it to cut. It just feels effortless to just, I just be patient and let the saw do the work. Whereas with the old chain, you really had to push into it to get it to do anything. This, this is gonna be good. So yeah, I'm gonna finish this cut and uh, maybe do maybe do one more using, using this to sort of make a, a 90 down the side and then I'll hook up that Alaskan mill and see what it's like pushing with that thing because that gets you a little bit better leverage to really push into the chain. But uh, yeah, I'm loving it. This is so good. That looks so good, guys. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna give you a little little view down the log here. This tree that we're using, this was a standing dead uh, a few months back and chopped it down and it's sort of just been sitting here on these logs for a little while. That is rock solid and uh, I did notice the two by six from the factory, it, it swells a little, it's a little wider at this end than the far end. And so uh, you can see it was sort of pinching that a little bit for the very end of it. But again, we look down that, that is usable lumber right there. So I'm gonna flip this over 90 degrees, do one more rip down the side using this timber tough and uh and then yeah we'll hook up that mill but this is this is going really good guys i'm i'm loving it i'm just gonna crank some tunes and uh maybe a podcast about how to start a small business because that's something i want to do and build high bankers and uh store the aluminum for those high bankers in this lumber that i harvested myself out here that would be a pretty pretty meaningful thing to use this stuff for right new beginnings um 
but yeah, I, I, I can't say enough just how much nicer it feels cutting with that chain. I'm super surprised. So I will probably in this video switch chains at the very end of the video. And I'm curious, does this, does this still cross cut half decent compared to a regular cross cutting chain? Maybe do a few tests like that, but mainly just here to mill lumber and we'll see uh, how much daylight we have. I imagine it's a bit of an art to figure out exactly you know, where to cut, but we'll learn that along the way. Running hot. I don't know if I'm supposed to choke it. Probably not. Maybe a little throttle here. actual lumber um, okay I'm gonna do one cut over on this log just so I get that squared off edge and then it's milling time I've got her set up for inch and three-quarter thickness I do not have tape measure but we'll uh, see how it looks or this is set to three and a quarter and then this is gonna take up an inch and a half so we should have an inch and three quarters left over. When she's hot, she likes to start with some throttle. Initial impression, um, I really don't have to push very hard. Um, you can hear when I when I push a little too much, it just you can you can feel the saw start to slow down. But it's it's cutting smooth, it's cutting steady, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna breeze on through this, and we'll see what kind of a cut we actually get once we flip her open. <laughs> This piece here and these two washers have slid apart and let this slide sideways until it finally nicked this thing. Um, I'm sure that can't be good for the teeth because the teeth were going to be digging into this as well. Basically the chainsaw goes in here and then the tip is pinched right here. So if we see this, this is a, a washer that I just epoxied on. Um, and the reason I did that is because if we look here, you can sort of see focus you can see the circle of where the washer was pressed in right there and that allowed me to have the very tip of the bar getting pinched so it was pinching it right here where my 
finger and thumb is. Ideally, you actually want to pinch the bar back here. Now, the reason for that is there's a roller up at the front. So these little pins, there's, there's a sprocket in here that can spin. You can oil that sprocket. And so I had it on there and it was working fine until the, the washer kind of vibrated, like the tip of the bar ended up pushing itself off to the side like this. So it was pinching like that. And then that's where you get this nice cut piece um, right here. Like the chainsaw just cut that washer. Um, it did it more, more noticeably to this washer. You can see there's significant amount of metal missing and, and that has resulted in some pretty solid damage to these teeth. Like you can just see the nick in that guy. Nasty. That was probably from when it hit this little guard after it slipped all the way out to the side here enough to hit that guard. Um, so essentially I don't want to pinch this end because when I pinch that end with enough um, pressure to actually keep it from moving it it takes the two sides of this bar because if we if we look at the bar there's there's two separate edges there um and it actually pinches those together enough to make it hard for the chain to spin so i need to pinch it back here and the only way to do that is i need to slide this unit further to the left um but with this piece and this piece in the way, I can't slide it far enough. So my choice is either to remove this handle or remove this guard, because I, I could just cut the guard shorter. And I don't see the purpose of this guard right now, providing I'm keeping my hands out of the way of any excess chain spinning. Um, so I'm gonna pull the guard off, I'm gonna slide the handle over a little bit, and I'm gonna slide this piece over enough that I can pinch the bar not at the tip but just back here where it's just on solid bar and not on a bearing. Yeah this chain is just so destroyed. The full teeth like oh terrible just terrible. Saw so back in the cut. I did my best to rescue the chain, but it's it's really taken a beating. Um, here was the issue. So in order to try to get as large of a cut as possible, back when the, the safety screen was here, this had to be mounted further this direction. So it was squeezing right the very tip of the bar here. Now, even, even now, if I move like a centimeter towards the tip, when I really wrench this thing up, it actually squeezes the end enough that it, it makes it difficult to, you know, you can't move the chain. So it starts to bind. And I'm surprised it was cutting as well as it did initially um, with it squeezed in there because like it causes a lot of friction. So hopefully I didn't mess up this sprocket up the front, but this is about as much actual, you know, cutting area as I can muster out of a 18 inch bar, which according to my measurement, that's seven, uh, probably seven plus five. So maybe I get a 12 inch maximum cut right now on my 18 inch bar. Um, yeah, I'll fire this thing up and we'll hope for the best.
great. That's a success. And what we have here, oh yeah, you can build with this. That is, that is awesome. So definitely a lesson learned with the old uh, mill and where to pinch your bar. Uh, given how well this thing actually works, I would consider a longer bar. Like it can actually pull that chain if you're patient. So, you know, you let it stay up in the revs, let it get its oil and uh, see how warm this thing is. Not, not bad, actually. Um, I'm going to forego the two by six now. For the rest of these cuts, I'm just gonna run straight on the board that I've just cut and uh, we'll see how that works next. So I just have to adjust the mill from that three and a quarter down to one and three quarters and that'll get me another piece this thick. Still on my first tank of gas. So just one thing I'm noticing is if I don't have the two by six on top, when you initially start sawing like this, it could go like that or like that, right? And so that's where this handle, this part right here, you can actually run the handle along and eyeball it just to get yourself going. You can figure out exactly, okay, that's flat, that's up, that's down. Problem is, I gotta get it in into there. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that handle inboard a little bit and then give this a go. I did well. Um, I managed to use everything that was lying around here. Just that piece right there from start to finish as well as that piece and in between I switched from inch and three quarter thickness to one inch thickness. That entire like cut it, change the thickness and cut that was 12 minutes. I meant to tell you exactly how long it would take to cut one piece but I forgot I had my timer on. But yeah not bad like probably five or six minutes for like a big wide slab like that. And if you think per hour, you can you can run through a fair bit. Um, yeah, at this point, uh, I'm just gonna pack these out to the car. We'll take everything home and then we'll see what time it is once everything's loaded up on the car. And I might uh, do a little chain versus chain test just to uh, put the two chains to a race here at the end of the video for you guys. Okay, so this isn't uh, as large of a diameter as I would like to test on, but I've cut up all the large diameter stuff into lumber. So right now I'm using my, my ripping chain, the one I modified, and I'm, I'm gonna use that to buck this up. Uh, it might, I don't know if it'll kick back more or less or anything, but I'm just gonna buck up a little bit, set it up on this stump, and then we'll, we'll sort of uh, measure out like a, I don't know, a couple of feet and we'll, we'll rip it with this and then I'll switch chains over before I go and we'll rip it with a brand new stock chain and see if there's any real difference. Maybe I'll, I'll cut some rings off the ends too. Curious how it all works out. Um, we'll see. <laughs>
I'm going to go switch chains now and uh, we'll see. And we get a first pull start. this thing's round it's going to be a little narrower here thicker here thicker here narrower there the length of these cuts like looking from the end similar enough and I know it's not a scientific test it feels like this does not rip as easily um, I'll do a little triple cut back here obviously this is slightly thinner we're just curious today. The video is about ripping wood and building, building my little aluminum storage space. But I figured while I'm out here, getting pretty tired and hungry, want to go home. Let's let's just experiment one final time. <laughs> Have to uh, we'll have to look at the video and see what the times say if, if they say anything at all um, I would assume this cuts quicker with this chain uh, and and ripping cuts quicker with the ripping chain but we'll see not scientific you get all this stuff loaded into the car obviously hooking up to the mill and and cutting like a big slab like that would be a better test but just wanted a rough idea. All I can say is last time I was out here ripping with this thing, I was really leaning on that saw to get it to cut. And this time with the ripping chain, like butter. So, I mean, it doesn't cut like butter, it takes time, but the saw was able to rev up and, and run how it should without me leaning into it. I was basically just pushing barely and it travels along. Just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of what I was able to build with nothing but chainsaw milled lumber. So I did put plywood on the top and there's a, just a tarp like stapled there for now. So I'm not in any rush to get shingles on, but I'll do that eventually. And then this right here is actually one of those slabs I chainsawed. So you can see, you know, the line that the chainsaw makes on it. It's not too bad at all. And then I used my circular saw, just like a cordless circular saw to rip it into these sort of two by fours like this. And inside, um, I, I left the, you know, what do you call this? Live edge, I believe. I left that just along the front here cause I thought it looked kind of cool to demonstrate that this was actually built with, you know, harvested lumber. <laughs> and, oh, and I guess this uh, one by four was just something that I 
had lying around. But everything else, like all of this lumber and this and you know that and and that it's all actually chainsaw harvested so that was that was really cool and what i'm storing in here is a bunch of aluminum which i'm going to be working with and i've got sort of a large expanded this expanded metal here is the stuff that i currently use in my sluice on top of miner's moss and i'm really excited to try this stuff back here just as a comparison um it's not like a stucco mesh that's like super weak and fragile this actually has a pretty good profile to it but it's a smaller version of aluminum expanded which might work better for smaller gold i'm still deciding between just miner's moss with nothing on it versus miner's moss with the metal grating on it they both work really really well you just adjust your water flow according to how you're going and uh, there's a little more testing to be done on that but they both work i just i really like that fine grading stuff I think it would be useful there it is that's uh all harvested lumber my buddy's uh back 40 there and found a standing standing dead tree so was able to put it to use and save some money which is nice but yeah in the next video we'll probably get to talking about what my plans are for manufacturing gold mining equipment and perhaps starting a bit of a business doing that uh, it won't be anything too big, but I'm definitely looking to make some legs. I think like leg kits. The legs I have are good, but there's a few things I would change about them to make them just that much better. So if I make leg kits, guys who are watching this make their own sluice out of wood or aluminum. Well, the legs require a tape welder. So you can uh, just buy a, a legs kit and get out there and have your own, your own build set up quite nicely. The other thing I'm considering is building a small sort of prospecting sized box, something that I myself am looking to use both mainly out in BC, but I want it to be functional in Alberta as well, just depending on how you run the mats. Um, I've got a kind of creative idea for that. And then I, further down the road, if I even, you know, stay in business long enough would be my super big high banker, sort of the, the final touches that I want to do on that. I want to do a few tests before I start manufacturing something larger like that. But there you go. Harvested lumber, put it to good use. And uh, in the next video, yeah, we'll, we'll see what I'm going to do with all this aluminum. So until then, as always, thank you for watching. Cheers.